there's a sort of general pattern, the melt of the green and ice sheets exacerbating and getting less predictable year on year. And there's a lot of reasons why that might be. There's a lot of things that drive green and melt. But one of the most important things, and maybe one of the least understood things, is um, the reflectivity of the ice surface. And in connection with the reflectivity of the ice surface, black carbon, which comes from fossil fuel combustion, it comes from wildfires, because it's deposited out of the atmosphere onto the ice surface, is a very potent reducer of the, of the reflectivity or albedo of the ice surface. And by reducing the, the albedo or the darkness or the reflectivity of the surface, it absorbs more sunlight and therefore melts faster. In addition to black carbon, we've also realized that uh, algae bloom on the surface of the ice and that also darkens the color and causes it to absorb more sunlight, making more energy available to melt that ice. And these are kind of two key uncertainties driving the, the melt on the surface of the Greenland ice sheet. Okay, we've just arrived at our field station. Um, the helicopter dropped us off 10 minutes ago. We've just unloaded all our equipment and we're waiting for another helicopter to bring the other half of our team. Um, we can't really build any tents or anything yet because the next helicopter is going to come down and we're not sure exactly where it's going to land and there's going to be a lot of uh, wind from the rotors that might blow stuff away. So we're basically just going to go for a, a walk in east, west, east, north, south, east and west and uh, see what the site looks like and try and decide a good place to get set up. Um, Jason Barks and Marek Stabal of the Dark Snow Project, for example, have, have been looking into this in the last couple of years. There's been a few other projects looking into ice sheet albedo as well. Uh, it's also something that's been looked at on mountain glaciers around the world. But the Greenland ice sheet is, firstly, I mean, firstly, it's the largest continuous mass of ice in the Northern Hemisphere. It's very important climatologically. It's vastly expansive, but it's a great natural laboratory for studying this process because it's very flat. There's not much surrounding topography, so we can really get a grip on the underlying mechanisms that are driving the changes of, of, of ice surface albedo in this area. And then we can think about applying that to the more complex mountain glaciers. And you can see some on the surface here. These are some of the dark impurities that are darkening the ice surface. And this is a, a mixture of, of algal blooms and soots and uh, black carbon soot from, from fossil fuel combustion from ships and from wildfires.